Welcome to Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, the investigative journalism program, or IJP, where I ask the question, whatever happened to the pizza at McDonald's? Possibly still a proud part of the Pizza at McDonald's network. I'm your host, Brian Thompson. On Sunday, March 25th, 2018, at 9.37 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, I visited the Pizza at McDonald's network offices to find nothing but the burned husk of what our landlord assured me technically qualified as a building. Firefighters were still on the scene when I arrived. They informed me that the crumpled up newspapers I had stuffed into the office walls to serve as insulation had ignited. Their best guess as to cause was that a pigeon had stolen a lit match from a neighborhood tobacco enthusiast and carried it through one of the holes where a window should be in order to build a nest inside the building. I found this a satisfactory explanation, as our offices had lately been overrun by birds, and the neighborhood was chock-a-block with tobacco enthusiasts. Before I continue with this narrative, I should issue a warning that I am about to discuss matters of a disturbing nature. Should any children be listening, it may be prudent for an adult supervisor to escort them from the room. I shall pause for seven seconds to accommodate this precautionary measure. Fearing the worst, I inquired with the fire chief about the discovery of any human remains inside the offices. My unpaid social media intern, Bol Kakakia, should have been working his normal 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday shift at the time of the blaze. To my great relief, I was informed no human remains were discovered, though several pigeons could unfortunately not lay claim to such luck. I will again pause for seven seconds while you retrieve your children. Though no human being was injured in the fire, another entity took a mighty blow. My pocketbook. Before I had even left the scene, I received a telephone call from our landlord, who indicated that I, and by extension the Pizza at McDonald's network, would be held financially responsible for the destruction of our offices in toto. According to her, our lease specifically forbade stuffing the walls with crumpled up newspaper, or, indeed, any dry goods of any sort. I attempted to verify this clause in my own copy of the lease, but I discovered too late that I had mistakenly mixed it up with the crumpled newspapers and stuffed it into the now incinerated office walls. As I have spent all of my legal budget hiring an entertainment attorney to procure the rights to the film Willow from Disney, I do not have the funds to fight this predatory landowner. And in a real catch-2, too, I consequently do not have the funds to pay for the destroyed office either. In other words, this metaphorical pickle has turned into a literal quagmire. One might think these expenses would be covered from the advertising revenue generated by our subsidiary company brought to you by Inc. The Pizza at McDonald's network is, after all, one of the major audio programming networks in the industry, surpassing even the Panoply network in overall quality and customer satisfaction. But as I have previously lamented on this program, our advertising revenue has been next to non-existent, and I believe I have discovered why. In addition to my intern, Bol Kakakia, another person missing in this sordid ordeal is brought to you by Inc.'s senior account executive, Janet Scooper. Since the launch of the Pizza at McDonald's network, her entire job has been to connect our audience with the kinds of brands that would add value to their lives and also provide us with a substantial income. If the hosts of the tens of thousands of podcasts about reading Wikipedia entries on various murders could become rich advertising mail-order mattresses, mail-order meals, and mail-order mail, there is no reason we should be unable to do the same. But Miss Scooper has been nothing short of derelict in her duties, or, should I say, duty. Similarly, my intern, Mr. Kakakia, has contributed nothing to the company, save for hosting a two- to three-minute program called Willow Talk, the show where we talk about Willow, and occasionally tweeting asinine commentary from the official Pizza at McDonald's Network Twitter account, which, by the way, he has effectively burgled by changing the password without my knowledge. As a precautionary measure, I have kept a private investigator on retainer for the past several weeks in order to protect my business interests. 
Part of this protection involves sending me a weekly report on the electronic correspondences sent via our company email accounts. I will not go into the lurid details contained within their messages, but I have learned through these weekly reports that Mr. Kakakia and Miss Scooper have been engaging in an inter-office romance involving all manner of extracurricular activities up to and including hand-holding. It is my belief that this relationship has contributed greatly to the incompetence demonstrated by both parties. Further, I believe that with the incineration of our offices, they have effectively abandoned the company and have leapt together in search of greener pastures, as the correspondence I intercepted indicated a shared interest in animal husbandry. While I regret their romance's negative impact on the pizza at McDonald's network, I wish them the best. I am, however, withholding the last week's worth of their compensation, which, in the case of Miss Scooper, amounts to $5,000 in salary, and, in the case of Mr. Kakakia, includes a Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's sticker and a coupon for a free small orange juice with purchase of a McMuffin. So where does this leave the Pizza at McDonald's network and, by extension, the investigation into why McDonald's stopped serving pizza? In the case of the former, I am not sure. In order to cover the company's financial obligations, I long ago gave up so-called creature comforts, such as home internet and regularly washing my clothes. I had internet at the offices, as I could include it as a corporate write-off, but obviously this is no longer viable. I am currently partaking of the free Wi-Fi at a local cemetery, but, as it is expressly for the convenience of the bereaved, I do not know how much longer this scheme will last unless a loved one of mine passes away. And the fact that I am having to spend so much time in an out-of-doors graveyard means my cutting back on laundry expenses is quickly becoming untenable. But the investigation into whatever happened to pizza at McDonald's will continue apace. Thankfully, it is impossible to stuff crumpled newspapers into my skull and set my brain ablaze, so my inquisitive mind remains undamaged. Plus, I have a sacred duty to you, the listeners, which is not so much a burden as a driving force in what is left of my life. Finally, I take comfort in my spirituality, and in times like this, it is fortuitous that I am able to call upon the guidance and support of my Lord and Savior Jesus Ben David, son of Mary Ben David, and her common-law husband, God. Thank you for calling the 24-hour prayer line. Please stay on the line, and our first available prayer partner will be glad to speak with you. Hello, how may I pray with you? Hello, my name is Brian Thompson, and I'd like to request a prayer for myself and two others. Yes. I recently suffered a loss in my business. Uh, My office is burned down, leaving me in pretty much financial ruin and yes and uh, two of my employees one an unpaid intern and one an actual employee uh, seem to have developed a romantic relationship and run away together and so I would like to pray for myself to recover from this financial hardship and for them to have a happy and fulfilling relationship okay all right and uh, so have you found, uh, is the insurance coming through with uh, what you need? Uh, no, it is, it's not insured. It was a rental. I signed a nine-year lease for these offices sight unseen, and I really should have looked into them beforehand. But, of course, as a first-time business owner, I didn't know any better. And it turned out that the building didn't have any insulation in the walls. I thought it would be a good idea to stuff the walls full of crumpled up newspapers to act as inf- insulation. And uh, those newspapers ignited, burning the building down. And my landlord is holding me responsible. So I was hoping to seek some sort of spiritual help. I am a devout Christian. I believe in Jesus and his mother Mary and uh, Jesus' father God. And so if I could get any sort of support or guidance or even just a blessing from them, that would be great. And also, like I said, a blessing on the relationship of my former employees, well, my intern and my employee. Okay. But you won't be, uh, they won't be uh, joining you again in, in the business, will they? Well, if they came crawling back to me, I would have to say that they do not meet the standards that are required in a business partner. 
so I would have to refuse them another job. But I do wish them a happy and healthy relationship. Okay. Well, Father, I pray for Brian today. And Lord Jesus, I know he needs a fresh start. And so, Lord, we pray for all of the details of what has happened to his uh, offices. The Lord and the blame that is uh, being passed his way. We pray for truth to be told, justice to be done. We ask, God, that you would undertake for him. As he starts somewhere, we pray, Lord Jesus, for blessing. Lord, I ask, God, that you would just favor him, Lord. And, and Father, that he may be able to have that first start, be able to move forward, Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. I pray, God, for, for the finances that are needed. I'm sorry, there's a dog barking in the background. Is that distracting you? I'm outside right nope. now. I don't have any control over it. I don't know why they allowed a dog in nope. the cemetery. But Okay, okay, so I'm sorry. Please continue. That's okay. Lord, I ask God that you would undertake. And, that, and Father, you see the, the ruin that has come. And so, Lord, we just pray, Father, that there will be fresh hope in his spirit. And uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that, uh, that the Bible says you're, you're gracious and full of compassion and you're of great mercy. So we pray, Lord Jesus, for for mercy for his situation. We pray for favor and for peace, Lord, to be upon him. We ask God that you would undertake. Uh, the Bible says that we are strengthened with all might to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. So we chase away any discouragement and uh, lack of hope that Brian uh, may be experiencing today. So we ask, Lord, that you would undertake for him. We pray blessing on the intern and the, the employee. And uh, Lord Jesus, I know he only wishes them well. We pray for those he would gather around him to continue the business or to move it forward. We pray for trustworthy people, uh, people who would shoulder the uh, uh, the, uh, the burden of, of that uh, job. And Lord, we just ask God that there would be a good team spirit. That Lord Jesus, you'll give him wisdom and guidance. So everything that needs to be done now. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can I can I please add another? Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I please add another request that my intern give me the passwords to our social media account? So you don't have it? No, he was the social media intern, and he was tasked with updating our social media account. And he apparently changed the password without my permission. So if you could just tack on something to this request about that that would be very much appreciated are you in touch with him you no know where to cut? i have no idea where he is okay okay so you don't want to know where he is now no he's disappeared he was supposed to be working when our offices burned down but he was not there and i had the fire department comb through the ashes for his remains and none were found so did they, did they ever decide what had caused the fire? Yes, it was a, a situation involving a, a bird. Okay. Well, then how is how can your landlord hold you responsible? That's a very good question and one that I would pose to an attorney were I able to afford one at the moment. Okay. Well, Lord, you know that Brian needs the password and he needs to be able to move forward on that. So, Lord, help him to be able to acquire that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for your help. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. And goodbye. Do you know what happened to pizza at McDonald's? Do you remember it? Please send all correspondence to pizza at McDonald's at gmail.com to our Twitter page at at pizza at McDee's or through Facebook at facebook.com slash pizza at McDee's. Subscribe to our IJP on Apple Podcasts, and if you like the show, consider leaving a review. Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's merchandise is available from our Teespring store at teespring.com slash stores slash pizza at McDee's. To provide financial support, visit patreon.com slash pizza at McDee's, or to make a one-time donation, use our PayPal email address, pizza at McDonald's at gmail.com. I'm Brian Thompson.